Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another Retro Thursday recap. On this RTR, I uh, took a closer look at a 1991 Taito Classic on the NES, Power Blade. Now this is a game I never grew up playing. In fact, I found it later in life because uh, I enjoy platforming style games so much and this one definitely has a reputation. Uh, the setting kind of puts you, I think it's the year 2191 or somewhere around there. You play as the character Nova and it's your sole responsibility to uh, to get a supercomputer back up and running to save the human race. Uh, so it's definitely an interesting storyline. Uh, I think you choose between six different stages um, and it's got a similar setup to uh, Mega Man where you can choose what uh, stage you would like to go to which keeps it fresh if you play the game quite a bit. Um, the, the levels aren't uh, normal levels so yeah they're platforming it but you don't just go from beginning to end. Uh, in each level there's a contact that you need to find uh, and that person gives you a key card which allows you to get to the boss of that level. Um, so that makes it really exciting, makes it interesting. Sometimes you have to navigate your way through quite a bit to find this contact, uh, but it uh, really allows you to uh, get into some heavy platforming uh, gaming. Um, the, the enemies aren't too difficult, uh, they're very unique, very futuristic, uh, there's some futuristic animals. Uh, there, I thought it was interesting there were some uh, drone looking enemies which are very similar to the drones that we have in uh, today's uh, in today's world so that was uh, that was really fun to see that kind of futuristic thinking on their part and uh, kind of how some of that stuff has come true um, the bosses aren't too difficult once you figure out their pattern you're gonna die a lot like any NES game uh, but there are unlimited continues which is nice um, Nova is equipped with a boomerang and throughout each stage uh, there are uh, many different power-ups for that boomerang. Uh, the more power-ups you get, the further you can throw the boomerang and the harder you can throw the boomerang, the more damage it does to enemies. So that always makes it really exciting. You're also equipped with some grenades. Uh, I thought it was a little strange when you throw the grenades, you don't actually see them being thrown. You just see the screen kind of flash and it makes a bomb noise. Uh, so that was kind of strange uh, and, and the bombs really don't do much damage to the enemies. Uh, so I, I was saving them up towards uh, for the bosses at the end of each stage and that kind of made it a little bit easier. Um, so overall the gameplay is, is really good, the controls are really nice. Um, the game itself is fairly expensive, uh, it's towards the I think $40 right now retail. Um, but in my mind it's definitely definitely worth it uh, especially if you wanted to have a good platforming style game uh, and that power blade series I think there's two of them the second one is pretty expensive so if you wanted to get into that series and know a little bit more about it $40 isn't so bad compared to 300 something so um, it's definitely one you'd want to add to your collection overall uh, I would give it probably four cartridges out of five not quite a perfect game but uh, it's definitely really really close uh, but uh, yeah that's kind of all I had for uh, this week's RTR uh, like I said these are just quick rundowns of what I played on Thursday and uh, kind of my thoughts on the game so that's all I had for you guys make sure you like comment subscribe that always helps me out. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter as well. I've been uh, cleaning a lot of games in my game room on Instagram Live, and I always love it when you guys stop in and say hey. Uh, I always appreciate that. So make sure you guys follow those social medias, and that's all I have for you guys. So I'll catch you later on another RTR, probably coming out in a few days. So I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for stopping by.